Hey guys and welcome to Slasher X Games. So today we're going to be talking about Power Ups. It's a tutorial that I've had on my sticky board for quite a while now. I'm going to be experimenting on the platform series because it's got a lot of variables that we can manipulate to simulate what a Power Up is. So I'm going to head over to my sprites and I'm going to show you what I put together. So here we've got the jump which is the Hermes wings, we've got the shield and we've got the super speed. So when the user runs over this can of energy drink that gives them superpowers, we'll have some sort of sound play, a message will pop up on the screen telling the user what he's just run over, and obviously also that collision will be manipulating some sort of element within the platform mechanics to simulate the power-up. Okay, cool. So these are just going to be the GUI elements. The actual power-ups themselves are a lot smaller, so they're more relative in size to the man, even though... As you can see, that's one hell of a can. It's just that we can actually see what's going on. But there we go. There's the these are the smaller versions, and then also the messages that are going to be popping up is something really cool that I put together. These plaques. That one says super speed. This one says super shield, and the last one says super jump. So that's what's going to be displayed to the user. And there's also going to be a little sound of uh, someone drinking a soda. Okay, cool. So that's what we need. I've got this panel that's going to be at the top, and over here it's going to draw on top of them uh, these. Bam, bam, bam. So you can see which power-ups you have currently active. So first things first, I'm going to head into the room, into the create code, and I'm going to declare three global variables. Global super jump. Global super speed. And lastly, global super shield. All to false. So as soon as we run over one of these, it'll change to true. And we can use this variable to show or hide certain other elements, for example, the GUI on the top right of the screen showing the user which power-ups he currently has. Cool stuff. So I've gone ahead and I've actually created the power-up beforehand just so I could give it some sort of effects. Um, it's in my objects over here, object power-up. It doesn't have a sprite. Basically, it just tilts left and right. It kind of animates a bit so the user can see what's going on. If you don't know what's going on here in this code, check out my button tilt tutorial. It just does like a seesaw kind of thing. So that's all it does right now. It actually does nothing other than that. So ultimately in the create, we want to say sprite index equals choose. And we can choose some of the sprites. Sprite power up jump or sprite power up shield or sprite power up speed. Okay, so it's going to create a power up object and it's going to choose one of those sprite indexes and I'm going to use the sprite indexes when we collide with the sprite with our player to determine what happens to the game world and how our player reacts to it uh, differently now. Okay cool then let's go into the GUI also this is going to do nothing right now. I'm going to add an event this is going to be a draw GUI Let's uh, draw set the alpha. To 100%. Let's um, let's draw the that panel at the top right. SPR panel 0 and I worked it out to be 128 over 0 over there. And then here we're going to have if global dot super jump I don't need that. Global dot super jump, then draw sprite SPR GUI power up jump, and that's going to be zero. Sub image at 1085 and 90. Okay, so this is if we have the super jump power, draw a little GUI power up at the top right on top of the panel so the user can see what power up he has. And I can paste this twice more times. This next one's going to be super shield. And then lastly, super speed. And that's power up shield, power up speed. Um, and then I work this out to be 1155 and 1225. 90 pixels away from the top. All right, so that's actually everything we need to do for the GUI. Now let's head into the meat and potatoes. We've got our object player, and he's got a whole lot of variables in his create event. If you don't know what's going on here, please check out my platform game series. We've got gravity, speed, jump speed, 
horizontal speed, vertical speed, the state, the direction, is he jumping, is he falling, friction, different accelerations and max speeds, and terminal velocities. So we can actually alter pretty much any of this. The Hermes wings, which give the player the ability to jump higher, is going to be altering the gravity. The super speed is going to be altering probably the walking and running max speeds, as well as the acceleration. And the shield is going to be creating one of these object shields on top of the player, and um, that can absorb damage. If you don't know what a shield is and how this works, check out my video on shields. All the links to these extra tutorials are in the description. But we can just place object shield and tell it to follow the player at any point in time. Okay, so let's create a collision event. Collision with the power up. Dragging some code. Okay, so now we need to determine which power up we're colliding with. One thing I want to do is I want to say, well, with all object message, instance destroy. So that's the message that's going to be popping up on the screen saying, oh, you have the super jump power, or oh, you have super shield, or a super speed ability. We want to destroy them all before we create a fresh one, just in case there's one already on the screen. Then I'm going to audio play sound. It's going to be the sound of someone drinking, uh, drinking a soda. It's quite short. It has full priority and it doesn't loop. Okay, if you want to learn about the sound engine in Game Maker Studio, I've got two videos for that. The basic, um, which handles um, sound distances, and then I've also got the more advanced tutorial, which uses 3D sounds. It's actually quite fun. Uh, check those out. Links also in the description. Those were two very recent videos I did. Then I'm going to say switch, and this is going to be switching on other, so that's the object that we're colliding with, so that will be object power up, or an instance of object power up, and that's going to be the sprite index that we want to look at, and those had three cases, SPR power up jump, we had SPR power up sh uh, shield, and lastly, SPR power up uh, speed. Just like that. So when we jump, like I said in the create event, let's change the gravity. So it's at 1.2. If it's anything smaller, the player will be able to jump higher and he'll be falling to the ground a lot slower. So because of that power, he can stay in the air for much longer than everyone else. So here I'm going to say that gravity for him is now 0 0.8. So gravity is much less. Also, super jump is true. He's definitely super jumping. And because we say super jump is true here, now in the GUI and the draw GUI event, this is going to be true. And it's going to draw the sprite on top of the panel to show the user that he does indeed have these super jump capabilities. Then I'm going to say with instance create. And this is going to be object message. I'll get to creating this in a second. Uh, the sprite type is going to equal SPR plaque jump. And this needs to have some coordinates, so we can put it anyway. I'm just going to have a draw GUI uh, draw this sprite to the screen. So that's the power up. Uh, so that's the jump power up right over there. Gravity is reduced. We are now in possession of super jump, and we're going to show the user a message. I can get rid of these brackets like that. Okay, cool. So now the shield is slightly different. Firstly, I don't want to create multiple shields. I only want one in this room at the time. So if it doesn't exist, well, then we're going to create it at the X and Y of the player. And it's going to be object shield. OK. Next thing, you guessed it, global super shield equals true. User's got a super shield now. And we can do the same thing with the message. Cine block shield. Very good. 
Now with the speed, there are a lot more variables involved because if we go back to our create event, we have SPD, we have walking and we have walking accelerations, walking max speeds, running accelerations and running max speeds. So there's actually like five variables that have anything to do with speed. So I'm actually going to be altering um, all of them. So let's grab speed and let's grab the last four over here. Okay, so speed was 10. That's like the normal speed. Let's make that slightly faster. Let's make it 15. Walking acceleration was 0.2. Let's make that 0.3 so you can accelerate a little faster. Walking max speed was speed divided by 3. That one is fine. Running acceleration can be 0.6. And running max speed can be speed. So that's going to be 15 right over there. Very good stuff. So that is us updating those variables. He's going to be moving quite a bit faster, but not too fast so that the game is unplayable. Keep that in mind. You want these power apps to provide a small boost, but at the same time, it can't be ridiculous. Next, we're going to say global super speed equals true. And we're going to show our message over here with the plaque being speed. Okay, very good. And don't forget with other, so that's with the power app that we've collided with, we need to destroy it. Just like that. So, make sure there's no messages currently visible. We're playing a drinking sound. We are switching on whatever the sprite index is of the power up. If it's jump, we're changing our gravity, making sure super jump is true, and creating a message the player can see what he's landed on. If it's the shield, first make sure the shield doesn't exist. Then we are setting super shield to true and we are showing the user that he landed on a shield. If it's the speed, we are altering the five variables that have something to do with speed, making sure super speed is true and showing the user what he landed on. Very good stuff. So now let's go into creating this object message. That's going to be informing the user what he landed on. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that variable that I was using called sprite type. And let's default it to sprite plaque jump. I'm going to set an alpha to 1. I'm going to make it fade away as time passes on. Step. Just some simple, well, if alpha is greater than 0, then, you know, reduce alpha by 0.02. Otherwise, we can destroy it. And then also there needs to be a GUI event on this. Where we set the alpha. Draw set alpha to the value of alpha. So between the 0 and 1. And that's going to be drawing a sprite. And the sprite's going to be sprite type. So that's the value we are setting when we create this message. It's going to have a zero sub image and it's going to be in the middle of the screen. So that's 640 by 360. It's half 128 by 720. Just like that. Oh, and one other thing. I need to go into the shield and make sure that in the step event it's following the player. Uh, x equals object player dot x y equals object player dot y very good save that if i'm going to the game world let's see I've got some power ups here there's a power up and there's a power up and there's one up here in the air so you wouldn't be able to get to that one unless you had super jump there's another one there also that's very high up and so on and so on so you can put as many of these in the game world as you need Right now it's just randomly choosing a power up. If you wanted to have more control on which power ups get placed where, uh, then I suggest you create as much of the power up code in a parent and then create as many objects as you need different power ups. So you'd have object power up uh, speed, object power up jump, object power up shield, and then get them to inherit things from the object parent. And then you can actually give them the sprite indexes that you want. And you can actually see which ones you're placing where. So for example, we wouldn't want super jump to be up here because you need super jump to get to it so you could put maybe super shield up there or super speed and then perhaps down here you could have super jump so the user gets super jump and he's like okay now i can actually jump that and maybe he'll realize that when he tries to jump this one and he makes it quite easily okay cool stuff so let's make sure we saved 
and let's test this out. Okay, so as we can see, we've got no power-ups here on the top right. Here I have a super shield, so let's run to the super shield. There we go, it says super shield, it says I've got the shield now, and there I've got a shield going. And if I click the shield, it'll go down, it'll take some damage and such, and then it should regenerate. There it is, regenerating slowly, so let's keep moving, let's get something else. What's this one? Super jump. Oh, we can jump a little bit higher. Now you can change that gravity to actually make them maybe jump as high as these other platforms. That'd be really cool. Just like that. So we've got super jump. There you know. Notice the Hermes wings right over there. Lastly, we should have super speed. There it is way up there. Super speed. Whoa, look how things have increased in speed immediately. Max speeds, accelerations, and whatnot have all changed. And there we go. All three power-ups have been set. So ultimately, when it comes to power-ups, you can add it to any game you've got. And all it does is alter the very variables you already have. So I suggest if you're going to make a game with power-ups, first create the base game so you have the average speed everyone's going to be doing things at. So you can kind of tweak it and get to a reasonable play speed that people would be comfortable using without power-ups. So that when you do implement power-ups, it blows their minds and lets them experience things in a way they haven't done it before. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. I'm actually going to do a part two of this where we add timers to these power-ups. So um, each power-up only lasts like 10, 15 seconds, and maybe they even regenerate and be get placed randomly again in the map. So please stay tuned for part two of that. I don't want to add it to this because it was going to make it too long. If you like what I'm doing here, please check out my Patreon campaign. I do appreciate your support. We're nearly hitting $100 a month. And that means I'll be dedicating more time to getting at least two tutorials out per week because I know we need to start giving the multiplayer series more time. I know there's so much more that we'd like to do there. You can also follow me on various social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, things like that. And I've got Element Earth out on the various app stores. Uh, links are all in the description along with the project files which are there too. So until next time, happy coding and I'll see you then.